Hello, to be doobie doers. Um, this is Bobby with Madness Labs. Uh, back for another video. Um, this is not part of our Zero to Madness series. Um, this is going to be a new set of videos uh, about something that we're really excited about. Um, a couple weeks ago, the team at Ionic um, released a new tool called Stencil. It's a web component uh, creator, um, and it is hopefully going to change the way that we develop uh, on the web. Um, so up until this point, you had to opt into a framework, um, and so you have to kind of um, decide where, where you want to go right off the bat, and then once you're opted into that framework, you're pretty much stuck for the life of a project. Um, so the purpose of Stencil is to make it so that you can make vanilla JavaScript um, web components, and then those components can be ported or moved or shared between any kind of framework um, and wired into to any project that you might have. And so um, for us personally, this has been an awesome development because this is going to allow us to start to take some of our Ionic 1 projects um, and some other older uh, code that we have and then start to build components and that'll give us kind of a migration path out of an old framework and into a new one. Um, so uh, first off, I guess we'll just kind of run through the slideshow that they have up on their website. Um, and then we'll just kind of um, build our first component. So getting right into it, again, Stencil, it's a simple compiler for fast reactive web components. Their website is stencilljs.com, um, and this slideshow is viewable on their website as well. So as I said, Stencil is a compiler that generates custom elements. Um, it's part of the web component spec. So this is, this is actually part of the, the browser spec. Um, so this is going to be uh, a native built-in feature um, and it's globally understood by all new compliant browsers. Um, sorry, Internet Explorer 6. Um, so this is not a framework. So this is not this is not React. This is not Vue. This is not uh, Angular. Um, though it's very similar to how these these things are structured, um, it it actually compiles all the code and then all it puts outputs is JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Um, so it adds powerful framework features, even though you're technically not using any kind of a framework. Um, and it's created, of course, as I said before, by the lovely people at Ionic. So um, why they built it? Um, performance, stability, interoperability, and familiarity. Um, so if you want to read more into this, please go to their website. Um, here is an example of a stencil component. So if you've ever written React or you've ever written uh, uh, Angular 2 application, this should look fairly fairly, um, you know, fairly similar to what you've already written. So at the top, we do our imports. We import the prop and the component from Stencil Core. Then we decorate our class um, with a component decorator um, and then give it um, some contextual information. Um, so if you've never seen these at decorators in JavaScript, so maybe you use React or, or Vue or something of the sort. Um, so these are something that's kind of been um, uh, added to the spec, uh, I believe it's added to the actual official spec um, for uh, ES 2017 or whatever. Um, but basically these allow you to decorate a class so that you can give some contextual information uh, and then the compiler is going to use that in order to build the correct files. Um, and so, oh no Cortana. Um, and so, so here we have like the component, the tag that we're going to be uh, rendering the style URL that um, is relative to like this file, so the style sheet that we're going to use, um, and it can be SCSS or a regular CSS file. Uh, and then we have the actual class. Um, we define a prop on the class with name, and then down here there's a render function um, which returns the HTML that we want to render inside of this tag name. So if you've ever written React, this is very similar to you. Um, you should notice a lot of this. Um, note that this is all using TypeScript. So um, if you're not a big fan of TypeScript, um, uh, tough titty said the kitty, I guess, uh, because uh, we've been using it for years and it's been awesome. It has completely changed, um, you know, uh, how quickly we get an app out and how reliable the app is just because of the fact that it won't let us compile out terrible code. Um, and so the guys at Ionic really, really like TypeScript as well. Um, so go team. Um, so Again, this is very similar to React. Um, we're just going to return a bit of HTML in this render function, and then it's going to render that on the screen, and then we're passing props in. And if this doesn't make a little lot of sense to you, wait until we start building one, and then it should start to click. Um, so 
stencil compiled components have a virtual DOM, um, lazy loading and reactivity. Um, they're uh, high performance JSX, which is just a, uh, a that's what we just kind of looked at. It's just a way of putting your HTML inside of your JavaScript. Uh, and then the JSX, you know, uh, compiler will take care of it and output the proper files. Um, and now, again, I'm not covering this too, in too much detail. Go to their website, view this slideshow yourself, um, and start to actually click around their docs. Um, but Stencil API has a couple things. They have a component, which is the component decorator that we put on the class um, that holds the tag name and the associated style sheet. Then we have prop, which creates a property on the component. State, which holds a local state um, and watches for change detection. Then we have the event, which triggers an event on the component. A listen, which listens for an event fired from a child. Um, and then the element, which grabs the DOM element um, for the component. So how is it different from all the frameworks? Well, again, it's not a framework. So it compiles out. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, leave anything in the global namespaces. There's no stencil, window.stencil or anything like that. Um, so it's plain vanilla JavaScript and that's what makes this so tantalizing and so awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and uh, clone down our first, uh, clone down the stencil app so we can start building our first component. So as you see here, the first thing we're gonna need to do is clone down the repo. So I'm gonna clone that down and call it like web components. Awesome. So now that we've cloned it down, uh, we just need to get rid of the uh, the actual oops, CD web components. So I'm going to change directory into the web components. And from here, I'm going to open up my code insiders so I can actually run my commands from in here. Awesome. All right, so now I should, I probably want to get remove or get remote, remove origin. Um, and that's just going to get rid of the, the like we just cloned down a GitHub repository. Um, so we want to actually remove the origin. So we want to remove their link to GitHub so that we can sync this up to our own GitHub repository. Um, so now I'm going to go and run my NPM install. And this is going to install the dependencies that it needs because again, it's a build system. Um, so it's going to do everything on your local machine. So we need to npm install so we can install those dependencies so it can do a, its thing. Um, so while we're waiting for that to install, um, let's take a look at the package file. So you can see they have a couple scripts set up in their in their package file. They have a uh, they have a build command that builds uh, builds the actual uh, project. They have a dev command which kind of starts a live reloading web server. Um, and then they have a serve command, which just serves the, the server. And then they have a start command, which kind of just runs the dev command. So um, awesome, awesome, awesome. This would be a good time for some Jeopardy music um, if you've got it on hand. Ah, awesome. Okay, so now we should be able to run npm start. And this will open up the browser and run our first build. And you'll forgive me, this is running on a Surface laptop and we are not connected to power. So it is it is trying its best to record the camera, record the screen and be a dev machine. Okay, so there it is. So now you can see it says, hello, my name is Stencil.js. Um, so let's dig in a little bit and see why, why that's so. So if we look at the files over here, we have a source directory, so this should be pretty familiar if you've worked on any web projects in the last like five years. Um, so there's a source directory. Um, they've got assets, which are like the icons, the images, and stuff like that. Then they've got a components directory, and then you'll see inside of here that we have folders of components. So we have a my name component, and it's got a SCSS file, which just holds some basic styling for the component. And then we have the actual component JSX file that actually sets the whole component up. Um, then we have an index.html, and this is just our pre-rendered index.html. Uh, so this is where you're going to put in all of your your kind of uh, your layout for your application. Um, and in here, you can see that they've included the my name 
uh, stencil component. And it's got a first prop and a last prop or attribute. Um, and it's going to put that into this component file. So that's what this prop first and prop last is. That's what correlates here with the, open up to the side here. That's what correlates with first and last, these attributes. So we're basically passing data into this tag um, so that we can use it inside of this, this class in order to do some kind of functionality or to put some data onto the screen. And so again, why this is so uh, cool and why it's, it's um, awesome is because, is because of the fact that like we're, we're just going to be putting out regular JavaScript and HTML. So these things are agnostic. They don't care what framework you're using. So you could easily put these tags inside of uh, an Angular component, or you could put these um, anywhere. As long as you feed the right data in them, they're going to pop up and it's going to work no matter what framework, no matter what is behind the scenes. So, um, so then we have a manifest.json. This is just an appy thing. It, it sets up and downloads everything, makes, makes sure everything's going to be super quick and, uh, and it makes your browser happy. So you should totally make one if you don't already have one. Uh, then we have the www directory. This is a built directory. So like all of the, the files are loaded from the source and built and they all build into this www. Usually you shouldn't have to touch any of these files. Um, however, they're there if you need them. Um, then down here we have some of the important files. So these control the build process. So we have the package.json which has again all the run commands, the build commands, as well as the, uh, the actual dependencies. And then we also have um, a stencil.config.js. And so what this file is, this is what stencil uses to configure their build, their build process. So um, up here at the top, we have the config, and you'll notice that like we're pushing through under this bundles components, we're pushing through the my name component. And that corresponds with the my name component we create up here. So every time we add a new component, um, so for instance, if I wanted to copy and paste, and let's, let's rename this to your name because that's a freaking excellent movie. Uh, please comment if you agree. Um, and we're going to say your name here. And then we're going to say your name here. And now we want to go into each one of these files and we want to obviously change all this stuff from my name to your name. So let's control D like a boss. And we want to change it here. So now we've got a your name component. Um, actually, I got to change it here as well. Come on, Bobby, get your shit together. Okay. Okay, so now we've got the your name component created. So now we need to go into the stencil.config and now we can add it right after this one in this components array. We can say your name and that lets stencil know to pick up on that, to bundle it in with everything. Um, and then what these bundles do is each one of these objects is a different bundle. So for instance, if you wanted to like package up all of uh, your pages for your application together, because you know they're gonna be loaded at the same time, or you wanna package together the header, the footer, um, different things that are gonna be loaded together, or you know this component relies on this component, so you need them to be together. Um, you, can, you can make as many bundles as you want um, and that'll allow the build system to build you different bundles so that you can um, kind of consolidate um, and make sure that you're loading efficiently. So super cool. Um, and then this collections, we'll get into this and more in, in, a, in another video, but this allows us to uh, include other functionality um, and other components into our actual project. Um, so um, super cool. And I can't wait to actually get the, uh, the Ionic components in here and start to play around. Okay, so we've added our your name component, but we don't have it viewing anywhere. So if we go back over to the browser, you'll still see we've only got that first component. So let's make another one of these tags here. And this time we will do your name and your name. And this time we'll put my name. Okay, so now that I've done that, you'll see that it says, hello, my name is Bobby Johnson. Um, and that is exactly what we should see. So if we open up our yourname.tsx, you'll see that Bobby is first, Johnson is last. So it says, hello, my name is Bobby Johnson. Um, so maybe I wanna change those. Your name is 
And you'll note that like, you'll see the, at the bottom in the console, you'll see it's actually logging out um, what it's doing. It tells you when it's done building. And then you'll see that like, yeah, it, every now and then it gets a little stumped. Okay, so now you'll see that, that we've actually got it putting out the content that we updated. So um, this is the literal bare bone basics um, when it comes to intro to stencil. Um, I hope this gives you guys at least an idea of why it's awesome and why you should be using it. Um, again, one of the biggest things for us is creating a migration path out of our old applications with something that's standard and compliant. So we wanna use Stencil, um, at least in, in, in our, our workshop, we wanna use it in order to kind of create standard components uh, and then that way we're not vendor locked. Um, something that we're like huge, huge advocates of is, is preventing vendor lock. Um, and this is gonna be one of the great tools that's gonna allow us to do that. So hopefully this gives you enough to get around and, uh, and start playing with Stencil. And uh, hopefully here in the next couple of weeks, we'll be popping out more and more of these videos, getting more in depth, um, putting some events, uh, putting uh, state on these things. Um, so stay tuned to uh, our YouTube channel and uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Bye.